In today's video, we're going to be installing the KXFL3 roofing filter kit into my friend Jerry's Elcraft KX3. The kit comes with the roofing filter itself, little printed circuit board assembly, as well as a hardware kit that includes a screw and a little pickup antenna to be able to use the internal reference oscillator as a signal source if you don't have one available to do the final alignment. I've got a signal source here so I won't be using that loop or that part of the process. The first step is to turn the radio off and take the back cover off and that will expose the connector to install the filter. All right, so we loosen up the thumb screws on either side of the radio and then we can separate the back panel from the front and just be careful of the ribbon cable as we fold this open. Now the filter is going to install right on this little multi-pin connector that you see right down there on the circuit board. Now the hardware kit comes with this longer screw that's intended to be a retention screw when we mount the filter module in here. But uh, the optional heatsink that uh, Jerry's got installed on his already has that long screw installed. So I'll have to remove that or at least loosen it up so we can put the filter in place and then have that screw engage with the hole in the filter board to keep it in place. Now I'll just uh, back this screw out enough to give room to install the filter without removing it completely. The connector where we're going to mount the filter has got 12 sockets on it, but the filter module itself doesn't have all 12 pins populated. So the filter is mounted so that it's the ground screw area is closest to the edge of the radio, so occupying you know, kind of those first you know, end number of pins. And the filter mounts simply by inserting this connector down into the socket down on the board and seating it. Once this filter is seated properly, we can simply tighten up that long screw and all it does is send the end of the screw through the hole in the board. It doesn't retain it, doesn't make a connection to it, uh, doesn't attach to it. It simply pins the filter in place so that if the radio sees any rough handling, it isn't going to dislodge and come loose. So really that's all there is to physically installing the filter. Uh, the larger part of the job is to do the alignment, which we'll do next. So let's reassemble the radio and get started with that. All right, the first step to using the filter is to enable it. So we go into the menu and we rotate to select the uh, RX filter. Let's see, right there. And turn that to normal. Now the calibration process includes a procedure to use a little pickup coil to pick up a, a signal off of the 16 MHz reference oscillator. And you would do this if you don't have an RF signal source. But I do have that, so I'm not going to follow that portion of the procedure. We're going to skip right to page 7. The procedure specifies that we let the rig warm up for 15 minutes before we make the final nulling adjustments. But there's a number of settings we want to set up first. So we'll use some of that 15 minutes to do that. First step is to reduce the transmit power to zero. So we'll push and hold power and we'll dial this down until it says zero and tap power again. Next step is to use direct frequency entry to go to 14 megahertz. Next is a number of settings we're going to change in the menu. So we'll push and hold menu and let's rotate down to the AGC mode. Let's see, AGC MD and if we ask to set that to on, that's already is on. And then uh, the automatic antenna tuner is installed, but we need to bypass it for this uh, uh, process here. So we'll change that uh, ATU to bypass. Next is to set the dual RX to zero. So we rotate up to the dual RX and set that to off. Next, set the RX shift to normal. So let's rotate up to RX shift. And that's already on normal. And let's set the RX X filter to normal. But we actually just did that, or we did that already to turn that on. And the S meter mode to normal. And that's already on normal. And uh, we can tap this off to turn the menu off. Now we cycle the power on the radio so that any new changes that we've made will get properly loaded in. Next tap the mode switch to go to CW mode. We already were there. 
If you are in CW reverse, just push and hold the mode switch so that we're not in CW reverse. If the attenuator is on, as shown by the ATT indicator here, tap the attenuator button to turn that off. Next, let's adjust the RF gain to be sure that it's at zero and not some lower value. Touch this again and adjust the volume till it shows 15. Touch and hold the pitch and adjust the pitch for 530 hertz. Now take a look to be sure that the passband tuning value is set to 1 and not 2. And with 1 selected, rotate to adjust down to 300 hertz or 0.3. Then switch to number 2 and rotate the knob till that one shows 530 and you'll get the asterisk indicating that it matches the pitch. Now per the instructions I've set my signal generator to a convenient frequency in the 14 megahertz frequency range at uh, minus 33 dBm output. With the si signal generator connected we use the direct frequency entry to set that frequency specifically on the radio. I'll turn the volume down a little bit so you don't listen to that tone until we actually need it. The instructions state that you're going to find a, the opposite sideband about a kilohertz below this. If we listen down there, you can hear that as well. So just be sure that you tune to the main signal and not the, uh, the other sideband. The other sideband is what's going to be rejected as we follow the alignment procedure. And next we adjust the RIT to get to minus 1.06 which is where that unwanted side bend is that we're going to reject. We're going to hold down the rate for three seconds. So that will lock our controls so we don't accidentally change frequency. So now we'll begin the nulling process. Uh, go into the menu and select the RXSB Null. Now we hold down the kilohertz button uh, until the lock symbol goes away. Then we tap the attend button and we see the value reads phase. We want to write down that original value in case we want to return to it at some point in the future. So our phase here was 61. So now we want to adjust to find the minimum. Let's watch the S meter. If I go down, you can see when I get right to about 40, 41, I jump up one digit. So that's what's called 40, my threshold there, where I jump up. I go the other way, I get to about 70, I think, and I jump up. So we want to be halfway between 40 and 70, which should be right at 55 or so. So we'll call that our minimum phase. Next, we tap the pre key to switch to gain. And again, write down the number that we see here in case we need to return to it at any point in the future. Now we want to adjust the gain the same way to find the minimum of this uh, unwanted sideband. Let's see, well that's going the wrong direction, so let's go down. Oh, get, oh really slow, oh, about down here it almost goes away. Let's go back up. Alright, so somewhere around 14, 15 or so is where our minimum is. Now that it's really low, I'm going to turn the volume up so we can listen to it again. Just hear it now, got the volume maxed out. Let's see if we can get any bit lower now by listening to it. No, that's worse. 14 is better. 15 is worse. So 14 is our minimum for the gain. Now let's double check the phase. That's worse. That's better. It's about the same. That's worse. So I think we had it right, right there at the phase of 55 and the gain of 14. Now keep in mind, these are the settings for this radio. Your radio will likely be different. Next, check the passband tuning. If it shows 2, change it to show 1. Rotate the control to get to 0.6 kilohertz or right there. Note that the extra X filter changes from FL3 to FL2. This indicates that we're now going to adjust the gain in phase for that filter. We'll write down our gain of 39 and phase of 63 as our starting values. And we'll follow that same procedure. 
Go to phase and adjust for the minimum. Looks like it jumps up between 53 and 54. And then jumps up again between let's see, 45. So 45 to 54, that's 9. Half a 9 is about four and a half so we should have minimum phase right around 50 or so 49 or 50 so we'll set it to 50 as our starting point and then switch over to gain and adjust again for the minimum with gain I'm gonna bring the volume up here looks like we're nulling out and coming back up again let's uh, bring the volume way up so we can listen to it a little bit lower there uh, louder there. So I think 34 was my optimum gain. Let's go back to phase. That's worse. No, well, I think we found our best spots. Gain of 34, phase of 50 for the XFIL 2. Next, uh, we rotate our passband tuning to 2.2 kilohertz. And that switches us to FL1, and we repeat the same process of optimizing gain and phase. Okay, I like to kind of go until I get one increment up. Uh, it looks like that's right around 65 in that direction. And if we go the other way, it's like right around 56. So about halfway between there, should be right around 59 or 60. Let's set it to 60 as our starting point. Now let's take a look at the gain here. I'm going to turn the volume up so we can hear what's going on. That's getting worse there. Oh, it's gone way down. Let's turn the volume way up here. Let's see, 36 is worse than 37. 37 is better. I think 37 is probably the right value. Let's go back and verify phase again. That's worse. And that's worse. So I think we've hit it third phase. 30, or gain of 37 and phase of 60. Okay, so now we've nulled the unwanted sideband on all three filters in our new uh, filter installation. So the final steps are basically restoring the uh, radio back to essentially where we had it. ATU mode instead of bypass. Let's set that to auto and exit the menu. We can tap rate to unlock the VFO, the lock symbol now went away. We'll tap the RIT to turn the RIT off. And we can then uh, restore output power back to, let's see, what we had it before it was at 15 watts. And the final step, we cycle power. And turn it back on again. That ensures that uh, everything gets loaded properly. And that completes the installation of this KX FL3 roofing dual bandwidth filter. If you enjoyed the video, please give me a thumbs up. And uh, if you haven't subscribed to the channel already, please consider doing so. Thanks again as always for watching, and we'll see you next time.